All right, Andy. Um, your last video you sent, spot on. That jab's perfect. Um, you got to keep that ribbon on the bag. You sent another video without it at the same time. The one with the ribbon, just so so much better. Um, and it's it's giving you something to focus on. Get your range right. Get that jab right. And and it's it's all looking good. Um, I go over something on it at, at the end what I saw, but. I don't want to be too negative, I know you want me to tell you what you're doing wrong and you know, I've, I, like I said right from the off in emails, I didn't want to be negative saying this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. What I'm going to do today, I'm going to show you some, uh, some footwork um, for you to practice and it'll be self-evident just looking at yourself in a mirror and looking at yourself on your videos whether you're getting it wrong or right. Um, but it's easy fixes. Now we've got that jab fixed. Everything else is a, it's a piece of cake. Um, so I'm, I'm wearing my special costume because what you know I talked last week about about the defence and uh, basically this this black is a scoring zone and my head is a scoring zone. Anything that's bright green my hands below the belt don't count so like, like I said we'll, we'll bring our hands up relax our shoulders tuck our elbows in tuck our chin in now um, you fight re a real tight defense with your, with your gloves up here mine's a little looser mine's out maybe a foot it, it does the same thing if, if you look this is for blocking a jab and a hook this is just going to defend against a backhand and a right hook should you ever come across one. It's, it's different for you because you're a southpaw. Spaz. But this hand, if you look at where it's blocking, the whole thing of it where it's blocking on my scoring zone, does it block anymore when it's there? Or does it block anymore when it's there? The answer's none. It's, it's, it's blocking. But if I'm going to be throwing a jab out from that, if I'm real tight, Mike Tyson peekaboo style, he's square on. That's why he did that. He's square on and he was all set up for doing hooks, uppercuts behind that peekaboo defence, a custom out of thing. <coughs> but I'm going to be throwing a lot of jabs. Amateur boxing, you you win the fights with a jab. If you're out of range, you can't reach with the jab. You're gonna have trouble reaching with anything else. So that jab's vitally important, which is why I'm so happy that you've got it right now. But just try this. From the tight defence, it's got to come all the way out and all the way back. Whereas from a semi-tight defence, it only has to go that way. But I'm going to go back to that, I just want to show you something because I'm going to be talking about footwork today. Wore oh, my fancy shoes. Look at them bad boys. I'll take them off now, put my proper shoes back on. But going back to that job, um, I find, and I don't know whether you saw it on that last video I made from you, the one with the real bad audio. Uh, are you blocking the mic again there, Deb? No. Oh no. Um, yeah, the one with the real bad audio. When I was dancing around, did you notice how floppy my arm was? I'm super relaxed. And that's that's out there for me, super relaxed. If I was to bring it in, I'd still move around, but I can feel, I don't feel that tenseness that I, I don't like. So I'll have it out there. The defense is. The defence is just as tight, but I've got less to jab, and if I'm doing a double jab, where I'll go out and bring it back halfway and go out again fast, then I've got less, less to move, bum bum, rather than bum bum, bum bum, bum bum. Um, that's about it, just have a look at that uh, as you're moving around, see if it makes you feel more relaxed see if it helps at all um, but there's not much wrong now Andy it's just 
back jabs right, you're getting your range right. I'm going to change your position of your feet, but I think you'll change the position of your feet yourself after what I've shown you today. Um, just carry on doing it. Keep on keeping on. Uh, <coughs> so can you see me here, Debbie? Do I need to be here to get it all in? A little further back. That's right. Can, am, are you square on this line? Yes. Okay. Um, it's getting hot. I shouldn't have put all these clothes on. If you look at my feet on this blue line, Andy, that's, do, can you come so that you're straight on with this line, Debbie? So that you're directly ahead of me. Okay. Mm -hmm. I can't see. Just so, just so you're Get straight. Just straight on. I can't see where the camera is. It's too small. Well, if you look at where my feet are, Andy, in my stance, that's pretty good. You see the blue line? It's like inch and a half masking tape. I've got that definite line between the toes of that foot and the heel of that foot. Now, if they're both touching at that, then I'm, I'm going too side on. If they're both over, I'm way too side on. So, it's a, it's a good solid defence here. Look how, t how much tighter that scoring zone is now. Because I'm side on. But, I'm too side on. I can't get anything in that backhand. And if I try and get too much into that backhand, I'm all off balance. Now, I've got a, I've woke up with a bad back and I can feel that pulling on my back. But, you know, just look how far off balanced I am. I, I'm no power in my hips. I can't really drive off my foot. I can't turn that leg. I can't do that backhand we was talking about last week. Driving from the floor. And what you'll find, if, if you are too side on, and you throw that backhand, you're in all kinds of awkward shapes. Um, <coughs> With this basic stance, you can't do it anymore. This is boxing, you've got to be prepared to hit and, and to block a hit. So this is why this stance is so, in, so important that you, you've got to be able to block, but also throw a punch. So if you're two side on, it's great for blocking, but you can't, all you can throw is your jab. But the problem with it is, you, you're going to topple on a hook, you, you've no triangulation. There's, 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 no, there's nothing there, all I can do is topple. Now, more square on is good. Look how much I can get to absorb a hook, move out of the way of a hook. But, I'm, I'm too square up, I'm giving too much away, and there's, there's no need to, putting up too big a target. I get that stance right, I can still take a hook, but I can throw any punch at will. Now, you, you're pretty good on your hand speed, I know we talked about it before, but from your defence, you can't do any more, you've got a good solid defence, but every time you throw a punch, you're breaking up that defence. So every punch you throw, you're creating an opening. So the idea is to minimise that opening. Um, you remember last week, I talked about throwing that jab, and the shoulder coming up to protect your head. Well, when I'm there, when that jab's halfway out, I'm, I'm open. When it's fully out, I'm covered. And when I'm back to my defence, I'm, I'm covered. So there's only that split second, but it is a compromise. When I throw that jab, all oh, this is wide open. See it? It's all wide open. That's why we talk about your hand speed. Get it out, get it back. Get it out, get it back as fast as you can. It's for everything you do. For every reaction, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. 
Right, uh, I'm basically done with this now. I'm going to go back to footwork. Um, there's a few things that I forgot to mention last week, so I'm going to go over that now. <coughs> so, there you are in your basic stance. You've got your feet right. You can throw these punches. It all feels good. Equally balanced on both legs. You can move around nice and easy. Now if you end up getting two side on, here's a, here's a little trick, good little trick. <coughs> Pull out the nose pipe. Now you know I'm, I'm always saying if you can't go in a gym, you go in a gym and you, you, you'll be with your coach on the pads or what have you, He'll turn you, he'll let you on your shoulders, he'll let you on your hands. It's all just subtle little things he don't, don't, don't keep telling you. He'll turn you if you're two side on, if you're two square on. He'll turn you on your shoulders. If you've not got that facility with a coach to do that with you, the mirror, use the mirror. You can look in the mirror, you can look at what you are. See what's right, see what's wrong. Imagine that you're fighting yourself. Okay, what, what am I seeing wrong? Well, his hand's too low. I could fire hooks and jabs over the top of it. You bring it up a little, you with me? But this is an awkward one once you start moving fast um, to, to get in the mirror, unless you've got a line on your carpet. You can go out in the garage, get your hose. That blue line is now this line. If I if I'm coming too square on, as I'm moving around, you feel it. Try and get it so you can move backwards and forwards without hitting that hose. Then you know you've got that fine little gap, which is perfect. Now, if you end up, you feel you're going too square on, you can loop it back. In the Unbelievable. It'll take a while to set up Andy, but you, you, you want to set it up so that, that that heel stays in there, this heel stays in there. And as you're moving along, if you're spreading it, it means you're coming too square on. Because that uh, shoulder width and a few inches I talked about before for your foot placement, if you start coming square on, it's going to force that hose out. You see it? Just a quick, easy little thing. But you want to look at that. Take a look at your video. And, uh, <coughs> take a look at your video, see what you think about your feet. Um, on your last video you couldn't really see them um, from, from the camera position. I could tell what was going on with your feet by what was happening from here up. So, have a look at it, see what you can work out. It's better off working it out for yourself, because then you've learned what the problem is, how to identify it, you'll then pick up if somebody else has got that same problem. If you're boxing somebody and they're two square on, uh, sorry, two side on, you know they can't take a hook without falling over. So what do you try and give them? A hook. Right, uh, going back to footwork now. This is something I should have talked about on that last video. I forgot, and I'll keep going around in circles. It's, unscripted waffling but so that's basic stance so far when you're moving forwards you lead off with your forward foot so that'll go your back foot will follow it that'll go your back foot will follow it when you're moving backwards you lead off with your back foot that'll go that'll follow it that'll go that'll follow it if you're here on that last video of me, you need headphones on and it cranked.
but you'll hear my front foot dragging as I was moving around. All I'm just slightly up on the balls of my feet, back with my left foot, and then just uh, back with my right foot, and then just drag that left. Now, it's all, it all goes back to that tight defence, your stance. If, if you go too wide and too slow, you've ruined your stance. You've got to be fast and get back to that stance as fast as you can. So, drag it. It'll, it'll feel awkward at first and jerk it, but trust me, it'll come. Now, if you want to go side to side, it's the same. If you want to go forwards, you'll lead off with your front foot. If you want to go backwards, you'll lead off with your back foot. If you want to go left, you'll lead off with your left foot. If you want to go right, you'll lead off with your right foot. Just practice this little dance, this shadows dance, or, or whatever. Forwards, backwards, left, right. You'll find um, it's more natural to go one way. Um, when you watch one, you watch a lot of amateur bouts, and they're all going round in a circle in the ring, as they're facing off to one another. It's more natural for us to go one way. You'll use that to your advantage, being a southpaw. It's uh, like I said, we're doing basics. We can get to that uh, more advanced stuff later. But simple, a little tweak of your stance. Um, can have major, major impacts, but you've got to have that stance right, which is what we're working on now. Get the basics right, it'll come, it'll come into muscle memory, and you may be walking down the street, somebody says, stance. Straight away, you're in your stance. You don't have to think about it. This, it's there, it's locked in. And then we can do little things to change that, actually thinking about it. We don't want to do it all the time, so we don't want it built in to our stance, but an example. I say I'm supposed to be doing basics, but I'm always bullshitting, waffling on. But <coughs> there's your stance, there's your jab. That's as far as I can reach with my jab. That middle line. That, yeah, that middle line. Without me going off balance and ruining that defence, because like I said, we've got to be ready to throw any punch at any moment and get back to that stance. But we've also got to be able to block or move out of the way from a punch. So we, we, we're doing everything. Everything's got to be right. You've got to be balanced. Not too much on your front foot. Not too much on your back foot. So without me going off balance, moving my feet into range to get more on that jab, I'm here, stuck in my stance, feet are nailed to the floor. That's as most as I can get without going off balance. So if you're fighting somebody the same height as you, you're going to have roughly the same reach as you. So if I'm in range to jab him, he's in the range to jab me. And I can't do anything about that. But look at this, watch my ankle. I turn my foot turn my heel two inches, watch what it does to my jab. It's that one little trick from your perfect basic stance without going off balance, twist that heel and get another four inches. So I can be, I can be out of range. I can't hit him, he can't hit me. But then that one little twist, I'm in range. I'm scoring points. If the judges can see that glove hit, it's a point scored. It's a simple little trick. Um, what I was saying about the southpaw, you've got a big advantage with one little trick from your basic stance. But that basic stance has got to be right. Because you're going to be taking punches from different angles. Because you're going to be fighting orthodox guys. There's not, an, not enough southpaws out there for you to fight a southpaw every time. That's why I keep calling you a spaz. Because you are. But <coughs> this basic movement, I'm within range. 
I'm out of range. I'm within range. I'm out of range. Change my angle, block to punch. Change my angle, block to punch. I'm in range. I'm out of range. Simple, simple little movements. Slow them right down. Um, <coughs> if you look, my my feet are a little wide, but that's good for my balance. If I'm too close together, I can do the tiny little movements and that's all that's needed, but I've lost all my mobility. Likewise, if you see guys that are too far apart, they're not side on, they're not square on. Stance is perfect, but their feet are real wide and they have trouble moving. You find them compensating by bouncing. But if your foot comes up off the floor, from that perfect basic stance where you want to be in this, it's impossible to be in it 100% of the time because you've got to move, you've got to throw punches, but you want to be in that basic stance as much as you can. So if when you're moving, you've got to bring your foot off the floor, you've, you've lost that stance. And guess what's going to happen when somebody picks up you doing that? The slightest punch any angle is gonna, gonna get you over. So just have a look at your foot, have a look at your stance, see if you're two side on, two square on. Make sure you're happy and comfortable with it. Just practice a little movements. Outer range, in range, boom, boom, and out. In, boom, boom, and out. Different angle. Now, if you watch a lot of the pros, it's hard to watch it on TV because they focus on the top half of the body and boom, boom, sweat flying off. But when you get a, a real good fight, especially like an old pro like Foreman on his comeback, and you get some of the cameras, I can't remember what channel, but it showed the whole ring. You saw Big George, middle of the ring, just doing that. The guy's dancing around looking for an opening, using all his energy. What's Big George doing? He wasn't a fat, lazy guy. He was a guy using his brain. You, you'll often hear uh, people shouting, middle of the ring, middle of the ring, get control. You can control that fight from the middle of the ring. Your opponent's got to come in, try different angles. He's doing all the moving around. I'm just following him. I can start stalking him. Take a step forward and throw a punch, it's going to send him that way. Step forward, throw a punch, it's going to send him that way. Start narrowing him down. Before you know it, he's in the corner. Then you'll come square on and unleash. But little movements, that's. Try and get them little movements down. as part of, your, part of your training on the back and then you really got to turn on it on your shadow boxing free for all, nice and loose, you can even drop your hands I shouldn't really be saying that but if you're out of range if the distance between me and Debbie is what, seven feet? there's no way she can reach me I can put my arms down, I can be relaxed shake out my gloves back into the tight stance and back in range. Think about that when you're shadow boxing or even when you're on that bag. I've noticed you, you're getting tired. <sighs> Shake out. The, the more relaxed you can get, the less tired you'll get. Simple. That's why we don't clench them fist. That's what I'm saying about maybe move your, your slack in your defence a little. Bring that jab out. Not made that much difference. Somebody's going to hit me with a backhand. It's got to come from there. It's got to move that far. Likewise with a hook, it's telegraphed even more. For a long range right up. That's the only two punches this hand's defending against. So does it really make that much difference? 
if it's there. Or if it's there. Try it. For me, it's a lot more relaxed having it there. It's like a foot out from my face. It's low enough that I can see over the top of the glove. It's not hindering me in any way, but it's keeping me relaxed. I think it's an advantage because I've not got as far to travel to flick that jab out. Give it, give it a try. Try a few different things to stay relaxed. Do these little movements. Back and follow. Back and follow. Back and follow. Back and follow. Left and follow. Right and follow. Forward and follow. Try it in and out of range. You don't have to go mad moving around. You've not got plenty of room where your bag is. That's time, perfect time to perfect these little movements. I'm in range. I'm out of range. I'm in range. With these little movements, they'll come once we start advancing a bit more to driving behind that jab. And moving in behind the jab. Bam! Getting some power in it. But for, you've got to have your good basic stance to do any of this more advanced stuff. You've now got your jab perfect. Work on your stance. Work on your footwork. Practice this now. Probably won't have to send you another video for three or four weeks. You'll be able to fix your own mistakes. Perfect them. Get them set into your muscle memory. And then we'll go on from there. Good luck, bro.